Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom, Mosai, and Christ bless. I'm Captain Gideon, and to my left, also Abner. You're watching 15 Minutes with the Captains. Uh, so, today's topic is Love Thine Enemy as You Love Yourself. The misconception is that when you read that scripture, Christianity thinks that, oh, you're supposed to love the whole world and everybody, no matter what they do to you, just love, 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 love. This is why you see confusion in, in the courtroom where white woman killed the dude while eating a cereal in his house, and the judge gave her a Bible. The, 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 the bailiff is rubbing her hair. The uh, brother talking about, I forgive you. Meanwhile, white folks, when things happen, what happened? What do they do? Never forget 9-11. Holocaust, never forget. But you, oh yeah, just, just love and forgive everybody. You, Christianity, it's time for y'all to go. It's time for y'all to go. So we're going to give you the Bible. We're going to read the Bible according to what it says. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 40, 42. Yeah, 42 and 21. Verse 21. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. So the Bible says the Lord is going to magnify the law and make it honorable. Who was the law given to? Give me that in one, uh, Psalm 147, uh, verse 19 and 20. Let's see who the law was given to. Because what's the law given to everybody? Read on. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. Uh -huh. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Read. He hath not dealt so with any nation. So when it comes to the law, statutes, and commandments, God did not give it to no other nation. He gave it to Israel, his servants. You follow? So let's go now to Matthew 5. Right? We're going to uh, read verse 17 and then jump to 43. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. So God sent Christ not to destroy the law but to fulfill. Fulfill what was written about him when you read Acts 3.18. So you understand that now he's talking about the law, right, in this chapter. So let's jump to verse 43. Let's get to this law right now so you can understand He's not talking to everybody because the law was not given to everybody. Read. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Right, read. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So that law was given to who? To the Israelites. So it's, it doesn't apply to everyone. Only to the Israelites. Give me 1 Samuel 18, verse 29. We're going to show you what, who's your enemy. Actually, give me Leviticus 19 first. And then we'll go to 1 Samuel 18. Give me Leviticus 19. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So your brother is your neighbor. You follow? So which means among your people, you might have quarrel with your neighbor, which is among your people. So we cannot have hatred among us. There's a way we're supposed to deal with one another. Read. 
Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. So your neighbor, your brother is the children of your people that you're not supposed to have grudges against them. Read. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself, even if that neighbor has become an enemy. Okay, let's go to uh, 1 Samuel 18 now. Uh, verse 29. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 18, verse 29. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David. And Saul became David's Actually, enemy. Actually, uh, start at verse 9. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 18, verse 9. And Saul eyed David from that day, day and forward. So Saul uh, um, uh, had his eye on David for a reason, right? Let's jump to verse 5. Verse 5. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Read on. And it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines that the woman came the women came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets with joy and with instruments of music. And the woman answered one another as they played and said Saul has slain his thousands and David his 10,000s. You see that so the women were singing and giving praises and say, hey, Saul killed his thousands, but David, this dude kills th tens of thousands. Read on. And Saul was very wroth. Saul was what? Very wroth. Saul was very wroth. He was unhappy about that. Read. And the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousand, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. So this is why Saul eyed David from that day forward. Because what? They ascribe David tens of thousands of killing, but him thousands. So hold up. Doesn't we, did we just read, you're supposed to love your enemies, pray for them. But David was slain tens of thousands. Saul was slain thousands. Because at that time, Israel was surrounded with enemies. And we were at war. So why we didn't just get on our knees and pray for our enemies? Why we were slaying th tens of thousands of them? Because that law does not apply to them. Because the law was never given to them. You're going to see who the law applied to. Read on. Verse 10. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. And he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hand as at other times. Mm -hmm. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his uh, presence twice. So twice he trying to kill David. Saul, read. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. You see that? So among brothers and sisters, evil spirit can jump on a brother and that brother or sister became your enemy. Hate you for no reason because of their own shortcomings. But you now, you're not supposed to go re avenge yourself because what? That's your brother. That's your sister. So you're supposed to behave yourself wisely like King David did. Read on. Therefore Saul removed him from him and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. So, see, if you apply wisdom, then guess what? The enemy, which is your own brother and sister, is going to be what? Afraid of you, just like Saul was. So you're supposed to behave wisely to try to win them back. Okay? If it was another enemy, David would have been slay him. Then David slay Goliath. Why David didn't pray for Goliath with your Christianity mind frame? When he came against Israel, why did didn't say pray and love your enemies? Wasn't the Philistine our enemies? Did David kill Goliath? Chopped up his head after he hit him with the slingshot? Jump to verse uh, 20, uh, 25. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 18 verse 25. 
And Saul said, Thus shall ye say to David, The king desireth not any dowry, but a hundred foreskins of the Philistines, to be avenged of the king, king's enemies. But Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. So David was supposed to marry Saul's daughter, so Saul trying to set him up to, so he can die. Say, okay, no problem, you can marry my daughter. Give me a hundred foreskin of the Philistines. So he sent him to accomplish a mission that he knew he's going to die doing it. That's hatred. That's evil. Read. And when a servant told David these words, it pleased David well to be the king's son-in-law. Uh huh. And the day were not and the days were not expired. Wherefore David arose and went, and he and his men and slew of the Philistines two hundred men. And David brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full tale to the king that he might be the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him Michal his daughter to wife. And Saul saw and knew uh, and Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David and that Michal Saul's daughter loved him and Saul was yet the more afraid of David and Saul became David's enemy continually so Saul became David's enemies continually you David knew that was his enemy David still married his daughter David was a mighty man he could have killed Saul anytime he wanted to he killed Goliath but yet, David, all he kept doing is behave himself wisely. Turning the other cheek. Love your enemies as you love yourself. Treat your enemies differently. You understand? Let's go to chapter 24. Same book. Chapter 24. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 24, verse 7. So David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. So David's servants still wanted to get at this dude. But when David spoke the words he spoke, that damn it hurt me to even cut this dude's skirt. That's the Lord's anointed. Like, I can't, you know what I'm saying? I can't do this to the king. That's love right there. That's turning the other cheek. Because Saul has done enough for David to kill him. But he said no. But Goliath spoke one word. David like, what the hell is this dog running his mouth against Israel like that? Let me get at him. And he went and killed him. Read. David also arose afterward and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My lord the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stopped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt. Behold this day. So why are you listening to people that, that said David want to kill you? Read. Behold, this, thine, uh, this day thine eyes have seen how the Lord had delivered thee today into my hand in the cave, and some bade me kill thee, but mine eyes spared thee, and I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. So David is showing him like, yo, today I could have killed you, but guess what? I won't do that, because you are the Lord's anointed. You are my brother. There's no way I'm going to put my hands on you. Read. Moreover, my, my father, See ye, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand? If you don't believe me, you see, like, look at your, you got, you got your garment. You don't see it's missing a piece? And I'm holding it right here? That's how close I got to you. Read. For in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe, and killed thee not. Know thou, and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand, and I have not sinned against thee. Yet thou hunteth my soul to take it. So that's how you win your enemy back. That's how you win your brother back. By showing them that you are a righteous person and applying the law, statutes, and commandments. That doesn't apply to a snake. You could nurse a snake all you want. It's going to bite you. Read. Verse 12. The Lord judged between me and thee, and the Lord avenged me of thee. But my hand shall not be upon thee. So David lived in the hands of the Lord God. You understand? God will deal between me and you. But when it comes to the other nations, never trust your enemy, the scripture says. Never trust your enemies. David dealt wisely with Saul. And later on in the book, he even did what? Elevate the posterity of Saul. Bring them back unto, give them soul, land, and all that, the, the offspring of Jonathan. To show you that law, go back to that law again, Matthew 5. Matthew 5, 43. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 43. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. 
But I say unto you, love your enemy, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So when you see that people that are a part of your nation is doing wrong to you, you're supposed to pray for them. Your own brother and sister in the body trying to hurt you for whatever reason the devil jump on them, pray for them. Do good to them. That's what the Lord wants us to do. But as for the other nation, hell to the no. Pray for their destruction because that's what the scripture says. You must pray for the destruction of your enemies. Not your brothers and sisters, but the heathen that's right about you. With that, we're going to say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.